Okay, welcome everybody to another Monday morning commute. And today's topic is turbos, okay? There's been a ton of talk about turbos uh, for very good reason, and that's because Toyota, with their all new lineup, right, they've now replaced pretty much every truck uh, in their North American lineup with some kind of turbocharged engine, all right? The NAV6 that everybody loves so much, and the 4Runner, and the Tacoma, uh, and lots of other Toyota applications, it's gone. You're not going to get it anymore. The Tundra, the new GX550, uh, the new 300 series, which we only get in LX600 form. Uh, that is a twin turbo V6. No more 5.7 liter V8 uh, like I've got in my LX570. And so this has been blowing up all over Toyota fandom for, uh, well, really a few years now leading up to all of this. It's really been known that it was going to happen. And they've been hopping mad about it. They're, you know, and I, I somewhat understand where they're coming from, right? Uh, this V6 especially that's been in the, um, in the 4Runner, and the Tacoma, you know, look, it slows molasses, gets bad gas mileage. You know, it doesn't make much horsepower. You know, so why do they love it so much? Well, because it's reliable. And so I get asked about this a lot. You know, I said in my lead up video that, you know, one of the things that attracted me to this car was that 5.7 liter V8, its reputation for longevity. And so I understand everybody's fear, kind of, okay, when it comes to moving to small, smaller displacement, adding turbochargers, feel like maybe they're going to be overstressing those engines, and that you're not going to get the reliability that you're used to out of the Toyota products, and especially the trucks, right? Okay. I get it, except for one thing, and that is if you go to really any place where Toyota enthusiasts hang out, all right, Land Cruiser forums, Tacoma forums, whatever, one of the vehicles that seems to be highly sought after, all right, in the what's now probably the antique market is those late 80s mid 90s turbo diesel land cruisers that we didn't get in the US. People go nuts when people import those and they show up on bring a trailer or whatever. They're so excited for the turbo diesel. Uh, and yet now when Toyota's bringing turbos to the market, everybody's flipping out. All right, so, you know, and it's been made worse by the problems that Toyota has been having, particularly with the twin turbo V6, starting with the Tundra, we all know about the massive recall. Okay. And so everybody feels vindicated for freaking out because here we go. They released this new engine, uh, and it's not as reliable and it's going to explode on you or whatever. And okay. But that's not a turbo problem. If Toyota's to be believed about what's causing the issue, right? This, the massive recall and engine replacement that they're going through, they say is from machining debris left in the engine block. All right. We don't have a choice really, but to take them at their word. Uh, and so if that's true, that's not a turbo problem. Now look, I have owned several Audi vehicles uh, so until my conversion recently to uh, Lexus Toyota Life, obviously I was a glutton for punishment owning uh, Volkswagen Audi products that had turbochargers. And yeah, not reliable cars. Uh, but again, I will say as someone very familiar with all the ins and outs of several of those cars that do have a bad reputation, um, turbos actually very low on the list of problems with those cars. Um, now 
if you neglected other things, well, the downstream effects of that was often a, bad, a blown turbo, all right? Uh, coked up oil lines because you didn't take care of it or you followed the recommendation that Audi put out and turns out they were wrong and uh, it was kind of their fault, but nothing bad happened to them over it, whatever, not bitter, okay? Uh, you know, coolant lines, things like that, things that end up killing turbos prematurely, lots and lots of mods done to those vehicles, all right? Pushing those turbos to their limit, not staying within the design limitations of the car, that sort of thing kills um, a piece of equipment like a turbo that is, you know, a piece of bolt-on um, performance, right, ultimately, at the end of the day for, for an engine. So, yeah, um, am I worried about this new lineup because of turbos? No. Uh, am I watching these vehicles intently? You know, I would, if it were me, you know, I don't buy new cars anyway, but I'm certainly not buying the first year of a new product when they switch from a turbo. You know, um, Toyota's not the first ones to have to do this to their lineup. It's not the first time they've played with turbos at all. All right, so do I trust them to get it right eventually? I do. Am I surprised to see that there might be some teething problems with it? Mm, no, you know, uh, it's interesting. Um, I had uh, more than one Audi with the 1.8T that later became the two liter turbo that they are still using heavily across the entire line lineup today, Volkswagen and Audi included, um, to a lesser extent, um, even Porsche. But, you know, they produced that engine for a long time. And if you got in a Volkswagen or an Audi in the late 2000s um, uh, with, with that two liter turbo, and then you got in another turbocharged four cylinder from someone like BMW that was just having to introduce, do what Toyota did to save fuel economy and meet horsepower demands um, in a competitive market, they were moving towards a four cylinder turbo. Guess what? That first one they put out wasn't very good. Now it made good power and it got decent gas mileage and it was, you know, not a bad engine from a reliability standpoint compared to anything else BMW made, but it was noisy. Um, the power band felt jittery. It was not a refined product. Whereas, you know, it, especially in more conservative applications, that two liter turbo from, from Volkswagen Audi, that thing hums. It's a very refined feeling engine. You would not even know it's turbocharged um, in, in most applications, all right? Uh, and especially in stock form. Now, BMW has since vastly improved with subsequent generations how their turbo engines drive. Um, and so that is normal and natural. And I, and I can understand somebody not wanting to be a part of that development process for Toyota, right? But obviously they've gone all in. Like I said, the new Tacoma, turbocharged four cylinder, the new Land Cruiser, turbocharged with a hybrid, okay? Um, GX 550 twin turbo V6, uh, we're not getting away from it. That's 2024, that's just the market uh, and the demands being put on the manufacturers. And so, you know, it's time to kind of stop freaking out about it, okay? Um, I am looking very hard at those cars for, for one we might buy next. I don't know, I said in my last video, I would prefer to replace this car with um, an even newer, to me at least, uh, LX570. You know, we'll see if that happens. Uh, every time my wife drives by a GX550, you know, I, I can hear sounds, right? Like just, she loves it. I completely understand why. It looks great. It's got great new tech. 
um, it is a massive leap for Lexus in not just the uh, the technology and things like CarPlay and actually being somewhat, uh, well, let's say catching up with everybody else and then having a great looking interior. And not only that, if you're looking in the overlanding off-road space, everything we've seen seems to point to that car being a really outstanding off-roader right out of the box, okay? Um, it articulates better than any road going car really ever has right out the right off the factory floor the new EKDSS seems to really uh, perform it's got some great approach and departure angles for a family SUV uh, it looks every bit the kind of car that you want to buy um, do some very light mods to you know maybe a throw a little bit bigger tire on there um, maybe a tiny lift, just a small one. We'll get to that maybe in another video. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like a real winner. And the twin turbo V6, guess what? It's got more ho horsepower and torque than this. And so I suspect it's a really, really great car to drive day in and day out. Um, you know, the one thing I want to get to about turbos that I see lots of complaints on, um, especially considering the gas mileage reports from owners and testers and stuff that we seem to be getting, um, doesn't seem to be living up to the EPA ratings. And it's making you all mad um, because it seems like Toyota is, you know, throwing all the turbos on their car to meet these demands and then not delivering on the extra miles per gallon that you know you would hope for uh, so people are like well i'm stuck with this engine i didn't really want and it's not really doing any better than the old one on gas mileage you know i brian and i have yet to go hands-on with one of those yet but i will say this as like i said someone that's owned many turbo cars all right this kind of response that you're seeing has happened to every manufacturer that has moved away from normally aspirated cars and gone to turbocharged engines. You know, it was a big focus for Ford when they rolled out the EcoBoost in their half-ton trucks, right? Um, and they even invited journalists out and, you know, um, let them run fuel mileage loops and, you know, ginned up little contests to see like who could get the best gas mileage out of it and uh but now here we are several years later um the ecoboost is ubiquitous in the ford f-150 and you know you still see a lot of complaints about it not getting great gas mileage and i'm here to tell you guys um yeah they're big heavy trucks they're not going to get great gas mileage but i very often see this complaint from people moving from their v8 or whatever and not realizing you can't drive a turbocharged car the way you drive a normally aspirated car and expect to really see those gas mileage benefits okay you have to um, be different on the gas pedal that's just the way it is you have to be conscious of when you're using that turbo and and stay out of it all right and otherwise you're right you're gonna use just as much gas because you're using just as much horsepower. And guess what? Horsepower is really just a function of how much fuel you can cram into that car, okay, over a certain amount of time. So yeah, if you're not adjusting your driving habits uh, with that turbocharged car, you're not gonna get better gas mileage. So, you know, personally, I can't wait to get my hands on one and uh, spend a little time in it. You know, the one benefit of the doubt I might give users is that turbocharged cars have gotten so good now about not having things like turbo lag and, and all the stuff that you notice from inside the car. They don't have that and it's very easy for the user to not understand when they are using the turbocharger simply because 
the car so good you don't get that kind of like peaky feel in the gas pedal and stuff so you know that's the good and the bad with the evolution and the engineering behind these cars being so good these days but like you've got to recognize that you've got to adjust your habits and and and, and your expectations accordingly right so you know like i said they're here to stay uh i can't wait to drive them I can't wait to see people get out and use them and and um, and hopefully appreciate what the turbo can do for them. I understand the drawbacks, but you know, hey, you guys are in overlanding, okay, or off-roading or whatever. A lot of the best places to do that are at elevation and a turbocharger really helps with that. A hybrid system is really gonna help with that. You know. I've talked about towing over mountain passes with this car. Yeah, it gets the job done. I'm impressed with it. But, you know, yes, the elevation change is noticeable on the power output of this car. So, look, that's my spiel on turbos. You know, I um, let me know how you feel. If you've got direct experience with them, let me know. Um, and, you know, hopefully we can respond to that in another video. And now... I'm at Brian's house and we are going to shoot um, another video. As you can see, it's getting dark in here. Um, so like the, this video, subscribe to the channel. We're our next, uh, we're about to shoot a video on the EcoFlow Wave 2 and uh, how effective that is at cooling down his trailer. So looking forward to that. We'll see you guys later.